Hi, my name is Ranger Michael Bogert, and here I am standing in Contemplation Circle. Behind me is going to be what was known as Battleship Row on the morning of December 7th, 1941. Now I have some visitors here. I'm going to ask a simple question to you. Ready? <laughs> okay, so what were the battleships that were going to be between the USS Missouri and the USS Arizona Memorial at the at that point. West Virginia. Okay, the West Virginia and? I think it's the Tennessee. You think it's the Tennessee? Yeah. yeah. You sure? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Virginia. All right. Well, congratulations. You're both right. The Tennessee and the West Virginia were there in that spot. I am standing in front of one of the mooring keys of box six that contained, that my visitors correctly guessed, the USS Tennessee and the USS West Virginia. In honor of the 80th anniversary of the attack here at Pearl Harbor, I'm going to be talking a little bit about the USS West Virginia and her captain, Mervyn Benyon. West Virginia is not going to be one of the older battleships here. She's launched in 1921 compared to the USS Arizona that would be in 1916. But it would be 20 years before the attack. So she had to be upgraded, repaired over that span before she's in the configuration she is in 1941. She eventually, of course, finds her way to the Pacific Fleet and will eventually be taken over by Captain Mervyn Benyon. The captain, he's a graduate of the U.S. Naval Academy in 1910, born in the territory of Utah. Throughout the years and hard work, he was going to earn the captaincy of the West Virginia. Unfortunately, it is going to be very short-lived. He's appointed in the summer of 1941. The West Virginia does have a part to play here. She's got a story, as does Captain Benyon. When the attack starts around 7.55, General Quarters is sounded and Captain Benyon is going to race to his location. That's going to be the bridge to make sure his crew and his ship are given the best orders possible. During the battle around eight o'clock, the USS Tennessee, which is going to be moored right next to her, is going to take a bomb in turret number two. Now barrel number two of that gun is going to shatter sending a piece of shrapnel hurtling towards the West Virginia. Unfortunately, it's going to be the bridge where Captain Benyon is. This piece of shrapnel is going to come ripping through the bridge and disembowel him. He will quickly collapse to the floor. Crew members that were on the bridge at that point in time are going to run towards him. They're going to try to pull him to get medical attention pull him to safety, but he's going to refuse. He's going to order them to step back because he has a job to do. He's got to continue ordering his crew, getting the commands through for them to counter flood the ship. His crew is going to try a second time to pull him from the bridge, but he is not going to move. He knows he's got a job to do. He eventually orders everyone on the bridge to leave him and to get to safety. He is successful and able to get the crew to counter flood the ship, so she sinks upright and saving quite a few members of the crew. Unfortunately, this comes to the loss of his own life. The rolling of ships can be extremely dangerous and can be quite deadly for the crew. And we have to look no further USS Oklahoma, which unfortunately did take on water too quickly on her port side and roll, trapping the majority of her crew who would die over the next few weeks. But the West Virginia story is not done. She is able to re be repaired by 1944, and she participates in some major battles, including Iwo Jima and Okinawa. She is able to survive the war, 
that she is in Tokyo Bay when the Japanese sign the papers of surrender. So she is here at the very beginning, and she is there at the very end. And Captain Benyon, for his brave actions, is going to be awarded the Congressional Medal of Honor. His is one of 11 that are handed out that day. Bravery, special on his part, is not for here. And as we celebrate the 80th anniversary, I do hope that you will remember his sacrifice, and not just the crew of the USS Arizona. There are people here that gave it all in order to defend their friends, their family, their countries.